Got a few basic items here. We're going to turn them into this. Simple tin can stove, done in a couple minutes. Very basic stuff. Works pretty good. Oh, it's working so much better than I expected. This is pretty awesome. Okay, let's go over the items. Some kind of marker. I love a Sharpie. Of course, we're going to need some cans. We're going to take a closer look at these in a second. A nail or a screw or something sharp or even an awl. Okay, a multi-tool. Some kind of tape. Doesn't have to be this wide. It's what I had. And something to baton with. A maul. Camp maul is always handy. Have you ever said that? Have you heard me say that? I've always said a camp maul is handy. A camp maul would be handy. When you pick your cans, make sure one is smaller than the other this way so you have enough room here when we punch holes to get lots of airflow. You're also going to want your can around this way to fit here. And if you want a portable camp stove that's not too big, this would be big enough to cook up, you know, for a single or two people if you're boiling water or just small cooks. And it takes less fuel. Center tape's going to work better. It's what I had handy. I'm going to put that across here. It's not so much as a marker, which is part of it, but as well, what I want to do with the tape is I'm hoping the tape will give me something where when I'm nailing with my nail and I'm banging through here, it gives it a bit of a bite on the paper and a little less slippery. So we're going to mark this. It's not going to be super scientific, but when we take our holes and our hole depth, we're going to use that and mark a line all the way around about that thickness. That one's near the bottom. This one will be near the top. This one will probably tape up the whole can almost. I don't even care if I overlap too much here. This, again, is not as much of a marker. I'm something for my nail to bite into. And if there's any leftover, I'll scrape it off. And we're just doing this quick and dirty. I don't even care if I get Sharpie on my multi-tool. There's a little groove here. In between that groove and the top lid, about halfway. Just gonna put this on here. And don't worry if your can dents up, you're gonna be able to fix it. And just bang it through. All right, done. A little misshapen, but none the worse for wear. Now we're gonna start banging some holes all over the place down here. And to bang some holes, bend them up good. I'm gonna open a few of those up a little wider with something else, but a lot of air. Your fire needs a decent amount. So this is where if I was using a drill bit, I'd be using the larger bits, but I'm just kind of random. To get those holes a little bigger. We're going to see if we can get the edge of this plier. This that kind of got a cornery tip into some of those holes to get them a little bigger. Just work them a little and twist. And just take your time here. You don't want to tear out the whole stove, but notice we've got a nice air hole now. Be careful when they're closer together. If you push too hard and you force too quickly, what you're going to end up with is a, take out the whole bottom of the stove. So just take your time. This one is way easier to punch through because you've got that reinforcement. I want to make these nice and wide. I'm going to do the same trick I did with the multi-tool. And it doesn't matter the height as much. Let's pop this in here, just like the other tool set. Now, here I can get this hole bigger, but I can get it even bigger. And I got that open by using the whole plier set. So you get a nice big hole. I might even be able to skip that. This is your airflow for the bottom. Not beautiful, but that's a lot of air. What we want is when that can sits on there, I want some air to flow right in there, which this should. And then some hot air jets come out of here. We'll test that in a bit. We definitely want to tape off of here because that's really going to be a hard fit in there. They'll come off. It kind of gets bent in a bit because we pounded some holes in there. So it's not going to be a perfect tear off, but it's not too bad. Guy Red Green, he says, if you can't be handsome, be handy. Oh my goodness. Boarded by masking tape. There we go. You could just soak it. A little bit of water come right off. So the test fit, folks. Roll that in there. Just kind of roll it in there. Drop it down. And we've got that little ledge right here, just kind of gravity sealed. Let's give it a go. Pop that in there. That's such a nice smell. Get that going a little bit. Well, it sure is exciting. Very exciting to look at. That's that birch burning off. Make sure when, when you're doing stuff like this, you've got a bucket, some gloves handy, all that good stuff. When I'm looking at it from my side, I can see some it's orange 
air, uh, I guess, blow the way the flames are going on that. Nice straight flame. There is a bit of a breeze, so you can see that flicker. Simple tin can stove, done in a couple minutes. Very basic stuff. Works pretty good. A little bit different than you see manufactured. And I actually was surprised the airflow is seeming okay here. I thought we'd maybe have to add some more holes around the bottom, but I think we still have a lot of good hot air coming up. Oh, it's working so much better than I expected. This is pretty awesome. And it'd be just about the right time for a campfire. It's where we can all sing along around the little campfire here. I don't have the best singing voice, but I sure have a lot of fun doing it.